We beat to rap what key beat to lock, but I'm cool like that. You're now rocking with the best Luminary Sounds, the, the number one station for independent artists. I'm cool like that. I'm cool. Great because you know you were able to take your cards, for example, look at the back, look of the at the year, b- and find and out, and find the card in yes. there. And it's great because it gives people a guide onto the value of their cards and right. to and to know what you're trading and to also be able to trade fair value because that's another thing. So we do trade nights once a month where we invite the community to wow. come bring your collections. Meet other collectors and start trade trading. night yeah. once a month. Okay. Talk, talk yeah. to That's, us a little yeah, bit about trade nights. It's on the website right here. That's what this that. is, right? Yeah, here. yeah. The, okay. The, cool. Yes. I'm, I'm, that, that's awesome. <laughs> Thanks for having <laughs> like that you're up. Just seeing it. <laughs> yeah. So trade night. What it is? It's once a month. It's uh, something that we provide for the community um, to for collectors to come by, bring their cards and trade it with other people and just meet other collectors and mm. network and and really get to um, you know network with the community right. and. and and it's great because some people they're able to make long fr- like long term long term friends. friends yeah yeah and same mm-hmm. common interests yeah right? exactly because mm-hmm. then you kind of find that it's it's kind of tough because I know when I grew up I used to go to the Thousand Oaks Mall my brother and I would go play like Pokemon oh, yeah. out at um, th- there was a card shop in the mall oh, wow. so at the time we used to go there and just um, we loved it my my parents would give us like twenty bucks once a month <laughs> and my brother and I would save our money and then we would go and buy Pokemon pack packs or uh baseball packs and we would just meet other kids there and of course. it was it was a blast you know i couldn't sleep the day before and even now today as an adult I, um I, I still feel that like for trade nights and you get excited about it and you say I your parents love, i love that yeah so it's like it's a family run business right yes okay all yeah right. so we're a small family owned business so it's my brother my dad and i and all three of us we own the business and we've been collectors our whole lives as well and we, we got we picked it up from my dad. My mm. dad was the one that introduced us to collecting uh-huh. and even to this day he, he collects um, artwork. So he kinda oh, wow. he does collect baseball That's and basketball cool. cards. Mm-hmm. But now he's he kinda moved into like artwork and fine art. So he found his niche. But at the <laughs> end, uh, you know, I we're we're diehard collectors and that's what we, we encourage people because during the pandemic, we saw a rise in the industry in the card mm-hmm. market. Um, people were locked in at home. People were, uh, you know, bringing out their collections, and uh, sports were canceled then. So mm. people were looking for a form something of to do yeah. Yeah, for a while. Yeah, and so that drove and prices. it went up though. Yeah. Okay. And even today, we still see like card prices going up just in general because it's very nostalgic for certain people mm-hmm. and it's kind of hard to put a price on certain things especially oh, when it brings back feeling, memories yeah a feeling for sure i think that's amazing that it's something that you and your brother used to bond over and then like here you are running this business that's awesome like <laughs> as an adult that's now, the best part that's the best that is so cool Wait, mm-hmm. like that's your that's what your passion is there is. any friction when working with family <laughs> <laughs> wow that's <laughs> that, that's because that's no, a great a question because i've had that before you know uh, my <laughs> wife and i in our business and like you know i love her but it could be friction so they like are listening. is it yeah she's listening right now <laughs> she's listening <laughs> yeah family, right now. So, listening. i had a joke with her last night and uh and we were talking about something uh and i'm gonna keep it between her and i but i said you know what from 10 a.m she's gonna kill me to 12 p.m i block your phone number so if you hit me up i will not hear anything you have to say and then i unblock i got an alarm oh, 12 o'clock unblock her okay there you go. oh my <laughs> gosh she's, but she's laughing about it so i like, know you really saw funny. my message i know you saw i did not oh my <laughs> Goodness. I did a couple minutes later. Right, right. So, so cute. It's hard with family, though. Yeah, it, there could be at times friction, but I, I try to be very optimistic about it and look at the big picture. And, mm-hmm. and really, at the end of it, I think of it as you know, it's for our family, for mm-hmm. our our family's kids, my my brother's kids, and. And even then, we do it for the community. And right. at times, it, there could be friction, but we try to look past it and. Everyone has strengths and weaknesses, so we try to cater to that. Whereas um, my dad is very more of the business savvy side, and okay. so he'll handle more, of, you know, certain business sides. I'm more of the customer service, you know, working in the store with the people. With yeah. the people, so. And, and what about your brother? What my is- brother, he's our, he's more of our buyer. He's definitely a, the oh. our, the guy that you know he he has a good eye for like finding. Um, you know, rare, that's a skill. Rare, yeah, it's a, it's that's, a really good skill. That's like a skill. I, mm-hmm. I call him every day. I'm like, dude, we need this. 
where is it, where are you getting it? He's like, oh, I found it from here. I can get it from this distributor. Wow, so, wow that's awesome. He's building relationships with all those vendors. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's it's definitely a lot of, um, it's fun, you know, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. it's, we, we just try to have fun and, and, you know, be positive because there, you know, business could be tough at times, mm -hmm. and, and it's a market, yeah. so it goes up and down. It goes up and down, right? But right. At, at the end of it, you know, we we love it. Of course, we're passionate about it. I, I do have a question before we get into our trending topics. What is the most valuable item that you have in a store that you either you display it or you either won't sell it? Ah, uh, great question. Well, <laughs> um, in the store, I'd say we probably our most valuable card is um, it's a. Uh, Let's see. Well, we just got it in. It's actually a, an autographed John Madden um, with the Raiders. Like John the whole Raider. Madden. Yeah, John Madden. It's, Rest in uh, peace. Authenticated as well, and it's a it's a big um, it's a big picture, and it oh. has the whole Raiders uh, team on there. That's mm -hmm. probably going for uh, three to six thousand. Dollars. Really? Okay. Uh, wow. But we don't get people walking in every day. You know, wanting to spend. Three to six thousand sure dollars. Who, who, that who, rate when people are like who, who specifically it? looking? Who appraised it at three to three to six thousand? Who appraised it? Yeah, so we base we go based off secondary market sales. Mm. So we look at big platforms such as eBay auction houses like Golden Auction. Or okay, Heritage. and you kind of you 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 go by that. Yeah. So we'll look mm. at similar sales that are going for like example John Madden's signature, and we'll mm. look at what his autographs are going for then anything that's very similar. So that's where it gets kind of complicated, where it right. could be hard wow. to price out certain certain cars, certain memorabilia, especially if nobody has sold anything similar. Mm -hmm. So it could it could get difficult, but that that's pretty, I'd say currently right now, that's probably the most expensive one we have. We, okay. try, we try to cater more to um, kids and the community. It's good. Because for us, the way we look at it, kid, we, we see kids coming in every weekend with a $5 budget or a dollar budget. Oh, wow. And so That's awesome you do right. that for them. Yeah, so, you know, they could come in and, like, pick out some baseball cards for a quarter. You know, <laughs> That's cool. We give them six. You get to pick out six for a dollar. That's so. awesome. That's what I used to do. Right? That, and that it reminds me of that, like Francois said, like that's what that's what I used to do. I, I have so many baseball cards at the at my house in Mississippi, and it's just like, it's a treasure to me. Yeah. So it, I mean, it's just kind of like this right here. So. Dude, th and these are awesome, man. Yeah. Like, they're in great condition. That's another thing. You know, we try to teach kids about... Keep it in condition. Yeah, because mm -hmm. condition, when it comes to value and collecting, it's everything. Yeah. And people are willing to pay more money for better quality condition right. cards and uh it, it's crazy because now there's grading companies that they'll take your card and then they'll grade it one through ten ten being gem mint right and then mm. from there uh people pay top dollar for the ten for ten oh yeah. yeah what's that the psa 10 is that yeah, what it is okay. psa 10 and there's beckett mm -hmm. so that beckett's another grading company right. and sgc is one above the other well yes Back in the 80s and 90s, Beckett was actually the number one company for for uh, return on your investment. So if you were to submit your card, your ROI on a Beckett would be a lot higher compared to like PSA. Okay. Mm -hmm. But then mm. today, the market, uh, people prefer PSA. So say, for example, you have this one um, Ricky Henderson card and you submit it to PSA and Beckett, your, uh, uh, your return uh. on your investment would be higher in a PSA then a, then a Beckett. Yeah. Dang. But that's just a current market. We yeah. don't know where the market's going to be in five or ten years. That's true. Because it used like to be Beckett. It used to be Beckett. Now it's PSA. Exactly. You. You, had, you had something, Missy? Yeah, I was just going to say, it sounds like you need to go to one of these trade nights. <laughs> <laughs> Junior. Uh, no, listen. <laughs> I, I talked to, yeah, I talked they, to they, Francois really Gray. Should. And I was going through uh, the, tr uh, the little treasure trove, and I'm sending him pictures of all this stuff. And he's yeah. like, are you kidding me? I have ba ba basketball it's stuff. It's amazing. It's pretty awesome. This but I'm awesome. a, I'm gonna go there. But I'm gonna ask you about Honus Wagner as well a little Ooh. bit later. I'm gonna ask you about that. But right now it is Missy time. <laughs> it's time for trending topics with Missy Talk. With Missy Talk for entertainment, fashion, and music. She got you. She got you. Uh. <laughs> There we go. 